What's going on y'all, it's Joe from Petty Fixes, back again with another video. So this is gonna be part two of the previous video that I did when it comes to beginning your YouTube career. This one's gonna focus more on equipment, gear, how to get your videos right, your sound right, audio right, picture right, stuff like that. So let's begin. Let's jump right into it guys. So number one, what will you record on? What are you gonna be using to record? You're gonna be using a phone, you're gonna be using a camera. What are you gonna be using to record? It could be a mirrorless camera, it could be a DSLR, it could be a point and shoot, anything, a cell phone camera. A lot of people nowadays, they start their recording off with a phone. They record directly from their phone. They get like a little mini tripod and they record with their phone, their iPhone or their Samsung or their LG phone. When I first started, I was recording with a Sony NEX 5N. It's a, it's a mirrorless camera. Um, I wanted that camera because I was very familiar with it. I had one before and I got rid of it, but I went out and found another one for a hella cheap. I found it, I set that thing on a tripod in the corner of my room, sat down and started recording. I just did what I had to do. I didn't have a microphone, an external microphone, any of that stuff. I just recorded raw video. So, um, if you can do that, you don't have to go out and splurge on a $2,000 Canon, Nikon, Sony mirrorless camera, nothing like that. You just gotta know what you wanna record on. You can do anything when it comes to video. Software is crazy, and we're gonna get into that later on. So yeah, man, um, when it comes to recording things, um, you don't have to get the most expensive camera. Um, I know a guy right now, he has 225,000 subscribers and records on his cell phone. He uses his back camera on his iPhone 11 and records on his cell phone. Granted, you know, it's got top-notch recording features and things like that, but he records on his cell phone. He doesn't he didn't go out and buy a super expensive, you know, mirrorless camera or anything like that. So it is what you make it. You can make things work when it comes to it. So figure out what you're gonna record on, figure out how you're gonna record, how you want your recording to look, and things like that. So that's number one. Let's go on to number two. So number two, composing your shot. Now, you want a background or something like that to bring the focus on you. You want to be the focus, but you also want to have some cool little stuff in the background. Now, I know people that don't do that at all. But for me, a person like me, I like to have something in the background to justify why I'm making the video or just to have a cooler backdrop in, in general. Um, framing your shot is a cool tool because you don't want to be to one side of the screen like way over here trying to record and stuff like that or you don't want to be like too close up on the screen trying to record where you just nothing but a talking head in general you know you just want to be able to frame your shots to where you can have good angles to where you can have good depth of field uh, you might have something cool in the background i got my monitor on this side i got my computer on this side you know i got some little things back up there some candles some sconces is what my girlfriend calls them i know freaking home expert i don't know what those things are called got a little painting up there you know it's a lot of things that you can do to make your background more attractive and frame up your shot to make your your shots in general just look more appealing so frame your shots up that's definitely a big one number three and this is a huge one because most people don't take this into account when it comes to making videos frame rate what frame rate do you want to record in some people like to record in 24 frames a second like me uh, and you got 30 frames a second, you have 60 frames a second, some some cameras do 50 frames a second, um, you have 120 for like awesome slow motion shots when you put it in software and stuff like that. There's a lot of different things, a lot of different ways to record. Also, do you want to record in 720p, 1080p, uh, 4K, do you want to record and stuff like that? There's different formats, 4K is obviously, obviously the more crisper, more popular thing to record in right now, especially for YouTubers, because you get more clarity. It's a sharper image. Or you can just record in 4K and you can downsample it to 1080p. You're still gonna retain a lot of that crispiness, a lot of that good, juicy, crisp footage that you're gonna get from 4K, but it'll just be in 1080p, it'd be a smaller file size. That's all it'll be. Um, do you wanna record in 4K, 24 frames a second, like this video is? Do you wanna record in 1080p, 60 frames a second? Um, each video is gonna have a different look when you record. 60 frames a second is gonna be obviously smoother. 120 is gonna be even smoother, double the frame rate of 60p. So figure out your frame rate 
and figure out what you want your video to look like when it comes to frame rate. So stepping away from camera, we're gonna talk about something else, audio. This is a big one. Most people don't understand how big audio is when it comes to your videos. Go back and watch my first video on my channel. You will see the big, big difference between my first and second video. The audio was so bad, man. I had the perfect video, you know, I thought in my mind, and I just didn't have a way to record the, the, the overlay for my audio. So I used a headset, man. I used a headset with a boom mic to record my audio. Everybody told me in the video, man, your audio is terrible, your audio is bad. I'm like, right, well, I gotta go out and buy something to fix my audio. So I had to do some research. I went and bought a Blue Snowball. Um, it's Blue Snowball microphone, it's about 50 bucks. It was cheap, but man, it made such a big difference. Go watch my review on that if you wanna see the difference in, in audio quality. But man, I mean, the day, the, 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 the sound quality was night and day, man. It was insane how much my audio quality improved and people noticed, people told me. So audio, whether it's a boom mic that sits over top of your head or something like that, or it's a little shotgun mic that you attach to the top of your camera, or you know, you got a lapel mic. I got one of those, but I'm not using it today. Um, there's so much you can do to pay attention to your audio quality. And then once you do that, you know, you got software to go in, you know, and boost the quality up even more. But yes, audio quality is definitely a big one. So you can use these things with your smartphone or a nice camera. Get you a mic, get you an external mic, because the internal mic coming from your phone or coming from, you know, your camera is not gonna be good. Trust me, trust me on this when I say this. So audio, big deal. Definitely a big deal. So, moving away from audio, let's talk about lighting. Lighting is another major one. So when you start recording your videos, the first thing, the first thing you'll notice is that you don't really know much about your lighting. Your video might be dark. There's gonna be a lot of things that you don't really understand about videography. Like me, for example, I didn't know nothing about videography. I didn't have any lights, no studio lights, no little LED panel light you know that attaches to my camera or sits off to the side so I didn't have none of that stuff so I didn't know you know that that stuff was really important and you know putting it in post processing I never paid attention to it I just had I knew I had a video I want to put that video on Facebook or put that video on YouTube or on Twitter or something so when it comes to lighting you definitely want to invest in some decent lighting whether it's an LED panel or you know some big studio lights like what I got sitting over here I got one right here and I got one sitting down here right below me. So I got light coming in like this at me. So you can kind of see like how strong it is on that side right there. It's sitting probably like a foot and a half away from me, which you can't even tell. So definitely invest in some lighting. Um, I personally would suggest natural lighting at the moment. You know, if you don't have the money for, you know, a big studio thing, you can get them for, on Amazon for like 60, 70 bucks. But if you don't have that kind of money, go sit by a window open up the curtains, sit by a window. Um, use your lighting, you know, your, your lighting from your living room or, you know, a ceiling fan or a lamp or something like that. Just play around with it and get your angles right. You might want to go for something of like a dramatic look and, you know, you want to have lighting on one side so I can move this away from me, right? And move that away. And now you notice that my lighting on that side is gone. I can turn this around. Now look, my video is dark. So lighting definitely has a big part to play. Let me turn these back around so you can see my pretty face. You don't want to miss my pretty face now. Boom, you know, it's that simple. Just have some good lighting, that's all I'm telling you. Lighting plays a big, big role when it comes to stuff. And last but not least, invest in a tripod. You know, you don't have to go out and go get some super expensive tripod. You don't have to go out and go get some crazy fancy stabilizing gimbal or anything like that. Just a basic tripod just to get you off your feet. Now, me, I went out and bought like a $70 tripod. Um, this tripod came with a ball head for mounting my um, my my camera onto, and it also came with a fluid, a fluid head. Now, that's probably something that you would definitely want to invest in is a fluid head. Um, they give you smooth panning motions, smooth tilting motions, and things like that. Um, I had to invest in one of those, a better one. So I ended up going with a Manfrotto one. And I'm telling you, man, it helped me out so much when it comes to doing my B-roll, my panning shots and stuff like that. 
yeah, you don't have to go out and buy some kind of crazy expensive tripod and nothing like that. But just get you something that's gonna have your videos stabilized. Um, you can just sit it somewhere and your videos are gonna be just completely stabilized. There's not gonna be any shaky movement or anything like that. Like this video, I have my video, uh, my camera sitting on a tripod uh, and it's sitting on a actual slider with a ball head mount and a uh, fluid head mount on top of that. So like I got a crazy contraption going on, but for me, it helps my videos be stable. I can lock my uh, slider in position. I can lock my, my tripod in position and it'll never move. Never move unless I kick it or you know, my son comes and grabs it or something like that. And that's happened a couple times in this video, which I ain't seen it. So um, yeah, invest in something that's gonna stabilize your video. It doesn't cost a lot. You can go out and buy $20, $30 tripods and it's gonna work for you really honestly. But invest in something that's gonna definitely help stabilize your video. Well, I said last but not least, but that's really not the last thing. Software, you need something to edit your videos. Now, some people don't understand that you can't just put a video out in this raw format and everybody's gonna be like, dang, that's dope. A lot of people like me use software tricks to make the videos look better. We color grade our videos, we do cuts, we do pans, we do tilts, we do all kinds of software tricks to edit our videos and have our videos look more appealing. Some people are gonna upload their videos straight from a, from a phone. They have different um, apps on your phone like KineMaster Pro, uh, Power Director, things like that, where if you're recording directly from your phone, just you know upload the video into that program, edit a little bit, add some transitions here and there, something like that, then upload it. Don't just upload a video straight to the internet, no color grading, no, no cuts, no anything like that. You know, nothing edited at all, nothing raw, unless you're really trying to put something out there that's, that you really need to be seen. Um, I use Adobe Premiere, personally. Um, you have free programs like um, DaVinci Resolve. Um, it requires a steep learning curve, but the free programs are out there. You can find them. Learn your products, learn your tools to be able to edit your videos properly and to be able to get your videos more appealing. So that right there is the last thing I have to say. But with that said guys, this is Joe from Petty Fixes. If you like this video or if this video helped you out in any kind of way, like this video and subscribe to my channel because I got a lot more coming for you all. Until then, see y'all in the next one. Peace.